Welcome to the Quantum Guide Show, where you will find interesting guests and discussions about cutting-edge topics to assist you on your journey. The Quantum Guide Show is ideally suited to the newly awakened and for those who feel isolated by their newfound beliefs. The mind, body, and spirit thrive when we have a mission. And there is no greater mission than to become the change that we wish to see in the world. So hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, and Telegram channels, and share this show with your friends. Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Before I introduce our guest for today, I want to give a shout out to, um, I was, well, she's not really a friend of mine, but she's the mother of a good friend of mine. And I want to say hi to Regina Richards. Regina, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching my show. I really appreciate you. And I just wanted to give you a little shout out before we started today. So today is episode 123, and my regular guest is Aurora Seraphine. Aurora is the founder of Divine Alchemy Temple Arts, a spiritual healing arts practice, offering numerous ways to heal and grow, both in person and remotely. She is an integrative holistic healing practitioner, unifying many modalities and sacred traditions. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, I'm going to read a little bit more about Aurora, just so you get some background information about her. So she's had a lifelong sensitivity to energy and other realms. Aurora naturally gravitated to the healing arts. And in 2007, she co-founded a healing, training, and event center for subtle energy practices and paradigm-busting gatherings. She is an essential oil alchemist, massage and body worker, intuitive healer, and advanced energy worker. Aurora is also a hypnotist, conscious musician, deep trance sound healer, and vocal alchemist. In 2013, she developed a, a sound healing technique called Sonoluminous Divine Entrainment, designed to support people in accessing specific brainwave states through frequency and guiding them to source-generated healing by creating new neural pathways. Aurora is also a writer, a speaker, mama of two, and an advocate for the organic high-vibe living and spirit-directed pregnancy and birth. She is an avid researcher of ancient texts and traditions and loves bridging the worlds of science and spirituality through the quantum. It is Aurora's commitment to align with her inner divine to support herself and others in becoming the most tuned in, radiant versions of themselves, awakening to the reality of heaven on earth. And today we're going to talk about Aurora's recent encounter with Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. Aurora, welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. So good to see you. And I'm so excited to hear about your experience. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's it's interesting that my life has taken such um, a broad turn of events over the last year of us connecting and doing shows together and so what's cool is that we can kind of document them in action and um, and share our experiences and people get to watch for themselves uh, the radical transformations that are taking place. So it's even interesting now just hearing my bio kind of in that biofeedback, like <laughs> literally <laughs> that it hearing it now with everything that has been transpiring over the last six months for me, it's kind of like I'm finding myself in a brand new place. And so while that's like a part of who I am and a part of where I've been and and um, a way that I've shown up for people, the way that I'm I'm showing up now and the way that I am seeing myself getting ready to show up in, in the near future is something completely different. But the cool thing is, is that we know that everything happens for a reason. And this is something that I live by. 
is that there are no accidents in life and God has a way of taking us through all of these, you know, points of focus and points of study and things that we need to be able to show up in the way that if we're willing, um, you know, we can fully be utilized by God. So, um, so that's, that's my little introduction to uh, what we're about to unpack because there's a lot to get into today. Um, so if it's okay with you, I've got some notes so that I can kind of start by sharing sure. some of my background um, on, on a spiritual level um, to kind of give people an idea of how I got to where I am now, <laughs> which is like, you know, we're always talking about transformation. You know, last time we were talking about transformations through diet, and now we're going to get into the juice of um, my spiritual world currently. So all right. So from a really early age, um, I would, um, I would say that I have experienced what, you know, certain aspects of spirituality, maybe even modern Christianity would call the gifts of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I was a dreamer. I had prophetic dreams from an early age. Um, I also, um, had, you know, visionary experiences. I had encounters with other worldly beings, um, from a very early age. Um, many different things like that happening. And, um, at a certain point I looked to the church body. So from when I was younger, I grew up in a Baptist house and went to a Baptist church And, um, at the time, um, in Texas, I didn't really, it wasn't to the point yet where I really needed support from the church body because I was still so young. So it was kind of more things that were happening at home. Um, but just to give you guys a little bit of background too, I also grew up witnessing and experiencing many very, um, mind blowing miracles. Okay. So, and, and I know that I've mentioned a couple of these on the show in the, in the past, but just for people that are seeing this for the first time, or maybe just to revisit, um, my mom, for example, went through a miracle for herself. And I know I've shared this with you, Karen, but my mom was diagnosed with a degenerative disease and, um, they told her she was going to have to deal with this for the rest of her life. And, um, that she wasn't going to have kids anymore. And this kind of thing is something that typically will take people down and out, um, you know, fairly quickly. And that some people don't recover. Some people, you know, they don't, they don't bounce back. Some people end up, you know, um, not able to function at all. So, um, through having, you know, her, through her own spiritual walk and being involved in the church and, Um, you know, and, and that was, that was what she was exposed to at that time. Um, she was, she'd gone to the elders and, um, they encouraged her to read the book of James. So if you know anything about the book of James, it's, it's really quite beautiful and it talks about our faith and it's not a very long book. So for those of you who are dealing with any health conditions, I really encourage you to read it. If you are looking for something to really like strengthen your, your faith and your, your note, your knowing and your certainty within you, because it really helps to shift some gears around, um, how we view ourselves, how, um, we operate from that center, from our still point where God resides. And when we can be, you know, have that I be single, then the whole body is full of light. We have to know what is our still point? What is our single point? And it it needs to be focused on that divine nature, was which is God essence, which is the God of everything. Because if this God of everything can create universes, why can't God help to heal the body? It's like, it's so fundamental, but we just forget, you know, and we're working so hard as humans to try and mechanically make things happen and try to reach all these outside sources to, you know, um, be our saviors. 
So my mom reads the book of James. She's inspired. She feels like she's received something directly from the Holy Spirit at that point and goes through a radical transformation, doesn't even end up going back to be prayed over by the elders. She ended up going back to her doctors and telling her, I have a mightier physician than you. And I thank you for your time. And they wrote her off as a religious fanatic at that point, which was in the 80s. And um, her body healed and she went into spontaneous remission. So after that, um, I was born and then my two siblings came after. So and then I have an older brother as well. But um, so that was kind of my first foray into incarnating into a body that was a walking miracle who knew who she was. So had I not had that as part of my journey, I think my life would be very different. So I, I, you know, I give thanks to God for the experience that he, you know, shared with my mother so that she could bring me in to be able to do the work that we're doing today. So um, another interesting experience that I had um, when my sister was very young, um, she was three years old. She went through um, having seizures and these weren't grand mal seizures. These were seizures that would happen when she would fall asleep. And so if she fell asleep and someone tried to wake her up, something would happen where she wasn't able to fully wake up. And she kind of went into the, into this sort of like coma like state. Well, so this was a repeating thing for a little while. And then she ended up going into one coma. She came out, she went into another coma and she, she wasn't waking up. And, um, my, I was at my grandparents' house and my mom and dad were at the hospital with her. And, you know, I, I didn't know what was going on because I was pretty young, but they had called in the pastor of the church at that point. Um, and they prayed over her and all of the, all of the doctors in the space said, can we stay here for this? And my mom and dad were like, yeah, of course. So they kind of just backed up and were surrounding her in the, in the inside of the room. And, you know, so they start praying over her and, um, when they're done with the prayer, they say in Jesus name, amen. My daughter, my, my daughter, my sister's eyes open. She sits up, starts pulling out the tubes from her mouth and nose and proceeds to tell them, um, and I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through the whole story because I, I know that I won't do it justice, but basically about her encounter with her guardian angels, um, and meeting Jesus. So by the way, during the show, I'm going to interchange Jesus and Yeshua because, you know, we know that that that's his, who that, what that was his, his given name, his true name. And that, you know, Jesus is kind of a modern um, representation of that that is now, you know, in the culture. And so just for like um, better understanding for people to, you know, keep in mind who I'm talking about. Um, So but anyway, so she and she's three years old at this point. So she was around the church, but for her to have such a clear encounter and especially how it how it synchronized in that moment with them completing the prayer. I mean, she had reached a point where my parents were getting ready to say goodbye because they thought that she was not going to make it. And my, and my mom, I remember her saying part of her prayer that, you know, God, I know she's yours. You know, if it's your will to bring her home, I understand. I know she's not mine. And like, as a mother now, like, I can't imagine. Mm-hmm being in that situation. Um, and then, you know, and then that takes place. And so, so these kinds of things were happening around me a lot from a very young age. And that's just two examples. And I'm telling you like, um, angelic encounters, different things like that, um, happening. Um, but the interesting thing is that there was a common denominator that was present during all of these things that I didn't piece together until recently in my journey. So, um, 
So when I was about 12 years old, we moved from Texas. We moved to Wisconsin, which is like a stark difference for those of you that know the states. Um, politically, weather-wise, it's like massive difference in these locations. So I, I get to Wisconsin and we, you know, get plugged in with a church there. And um, these these experiences that I was having of, um, you know, dreams and encounters um, started to get kind of on the darker side for a while. I was having um, I was having some experiences of attacks that were happening to me when I was pretty young. Um, and I won't go into all the details. Some of it is pretty personal, but, um, but it, you know, it was, it was concerning, not only for me, but I think my parents were terrified. And, um, instead of receiving help from the church, the church actually shunned me and were like, we don't want to have anything to do with that. Your daughter's possessed, like all Mm -hmm. this stuff that this is, if you, if you're a part of a church body and you're experiencing, you know, encounters or gifts of the spirit, like you need somebody who can help either mentor you or be a guide for you or, or at least support you to have, you know, you've got some kind of family or support system. And unfortunately, this is a big issue in modern religion and in the modern church. And so at that point in my life, I completely took off. I'm like, not going to be a part of that anymore because obviously they can't help me. Um, you know, they, they can't figure out what's going on with me. So I'm going to do the work by myself. I'm going to figure this out on my own. And so you know, but again, here we are again, everything happens for a reason. There was a reason why I had to start seeking. And so I started seeking in every area under the sun, um, from, from quantum physics to witchcraft, admittedly to, um, divination of all different kinds to, um, UFO encounters to paranormal, this and that, uh, just everything that I could get my hands on. I'm like, I want to know like what's Mm -hmm. going on. What is reality? What is life so that I can, I can make sense of all of this and I can feel validated and supported in some way. And so I started slowly, but surely in most of this, honestly, um, was me walking the solo path. It was not forming community, but eventually some community was formed. And most of it's online, as we know, like that came later. But in the beginning, I mean, it was solo. Like I was just doing all of my own research and reading and um, seeking all of these outside paths. So um, now, even though my paradigm has shifted around a lot of that especially recently, it was all important. It was all like all of it was uh, there. They were all important stepping stones for me to get to where I am. So um, let's see what comes next. Okay, so Yes. So what was the common denominator in all of the experiences that I was having was essentially that I didn't pick up on until more recently was that Yeshua or Jesus was the common denominator. He was the common theme that continued to be present in those experiences of radical transformation or of, you know, really eye-opening miracles. So you know, here I am walking this path and being called to the field of healing because I'm seeing all of this stuff happen around me and being just mind blown and awestruck at how powerful this source is. And there was still this missing component for me in my mind because I hadn't, I hadn't put together all of the pieces 
So, you know, but I think my heart was in the right place as I think many of us are. We, we, we want the best for people. We want to be in alignment with the most high, you know, we want, um, we want to experience miracles. We want to experience the supernatural. I think we have a natural hunger and eagerness to experience, you know, paranormal things, the supernatural, because at our core essence, we are metaphysical. God is metaphysical, but God is the ultimate metaphysician. And so, you know, without that component as our single eye, as, as our, our focal point or that still point of the heart, then none of these things are possible. So we can be reaching for miracles. We can be reaching for this ultimate state of satisfaction and fulfillment and bliss, but it's never going to happen if our focus isn't in the right space. So, um, you know, especially there's all these different traditions. So, I mean, there are ways I think that we can experience God. There are ways that we can experience the Holy Spirit. There are ways that we can have these direct encounters with Yeshua. But if, if we aren't, the thing is, is that God's not pushy, right? And so we have this free will. And if we aren't in pursuit of that, sometimes that path takes you know, we've got some like merry go, go merry go round stuff happening over here in the sidelines that could take us, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years longer to figure it out um, if that's not our primary focus. And it's not that like, like Jesus will come for us in one way or another. I believe that. Um but if we're not willing to listen and if our attention isn't oriented in that direction, then it's a lot harder for us to listen and to receive that, you know? And so what, what has been coming to me through these encounters is that he is the ultimate gatekeeper, essentially, that he is the appointed interface through which God communicates to man. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't have other language and other means through which, you know, it communicates. But, um, but as the primary interface, this, and so some people know that as Jesus, other cultures may not know that by the same name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's been, it's been a wild ride getting to the point where I'm at to be able to even say these words, because had somebody told me like a year ago that I'd be talking about this or speaking like this, I just said, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. I love Jesus. Jesus is an ascended master. And I love all these other ascended masters too. And they're all these brilliant teachers. And I still feel like there are brilliant saints and masters that have potentially gone through the ascension process as well. And I think they're all incredible, but we can't allow them to be our point of focus, but we can allow them to be sources of inspiration, but not, not the focal point as far as being our primary guide to pull us through and to um, pull in the experience of the bestowal of the Holy Spirit. And that's a big differentiation. And something, and so that's the thing is that not everybody has language or a name to define what that means. But these visitations and these experiences that have been happening to me recently have been showing me, hey, I've been trying to tell you this all along, girl, and you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wow, how did I miss this? So, um, and just to give you a, a tiny bit of background before I really jump into the encounters. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I being in the field of healing, I had known so much and practiced so much in terms of like mind body connection, um, understanding language and how language affects our reality, mm -hmm. um, the heart brain coherence, you know, like Joe Dispenza's work, um, epigenetics, all of these things. I had a firm understanding and I practiced it all. <laughs> 
And, and I mean, I dug into it. I was immersed in it. And so I, I, I knew how to speak the language. I knew how to share this stuff with others. And I was watching it make improvements in other people's lives. Um, but what I was noticing was as the years passed, all of the sessions that when I first started were so powerful. I watched the most amazing things happen, like on my, on my table, doing body work sessions and things like that, you know, and what was the common denominator in the beginning is that I would always include him in my sessions. He was always there and, and amazing things would take place, you know, um, I can't even begin to like describe some of the things that have happened. One of the most amazing things was, was being in an intensive um, where I was doing myofascial release in a group of um, practitioners and this woman that was dealing with many different issues um, at the end of the session, she ends up literally above our heads. We're holding her, but it did not feel like we had her weight. Now, that, that's just like a visual miracle, right? But then the other types of miracles, people being healed of MS, people being healed of abscesses on their brain the size of a grapefruit. I mean, massive, massive things like this that by you know modern science definition would tell you are impossible. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I watched these things happen. And if they weren't happening on my table, my mom and my aunt, we're also doing body work. We all went to school together and they were having amazing miracles happening in their space too. But as time went on and my sessions kind of evolved and shifted a little bit and became a little differently, you know, I stopped including him in my sessions. And I was noticing that this, this sense of ease, this sense of like, I had absolutely no doubts when it came to the ability to like watch someone heal because I knew it had nothing to do with me other than the fact that I was holding the container and calling yeah. on the most high. Mm -hmm. But at that point in my reality, I had demoted Jesus to ascended master. He was no longer gatekeeper, right? He was just another presence, you know, or, or being that had ascended who was, you know, only teacher. And so, so after, after some time had gone on, um, I ended up experiencing some health issues that came out of left field. And I don't, I don't mean to share this from a perspective that sounds like it, it was some kind of, um, like punishment, because I don't believe that in any way that God treats us that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that I had strayed from the path that God had intended for me to the degree where I was no longer in alignment with God's will. And so the thing is, is that the way that I see God's will is like, if, if you could put God's will in a, in a, you know, it's synonymous essentially with universal law. Mm hmm so when you're out of alignment with God's will, you're out of alignment with universal law. And when that happens, we start to um, shift out of phase with our divine blueprint or our divine inheritance. And we start to, um, we can, you know, lack in certain areas. We can, we can experience distress or distortion or disharmony in the body. It can take many different flavors. It can take many different shapes. Um, and for me, I started getting sick. And so I, and this went on for several years and I was trying everything. I, I was going through the gamut of changing my diet, which was already highly refined. Um, and I don't mean refined food, <laughs> I mean, <No. laughs> but yeah, like I had spent I had so much time and energy and money investing in all of these different modalities, all of these different supplements, everything. I was trying everything, trying to figure out what am I doing wrong? And meanwhile, the whole time I'm asking God like to show me, because I understand too, that our body, you know, speaks to us and that our body has a way of sending messages to us. Um, 
when something's out of out of sync to try and give us a message. And if we're not present to something, if we're not fully aware of something, then it's like the body has to speak louder because it, everything I believe starts sort of on the on the spiritual and then it kind of has to go through the emotional and the mental bodies. And then if we're still not getting the message, it gets into our cells and begins to sort of manifest and sort of hardwire in a physical way. And so I was already aware of all of that at that point, or, you know, so I thought, um, but I still, I was not getting it. I was not getting the message. And so there was this breaking point for me. Um, you know, I, I hadn't driven a car in seven years. Like that's how bad it was. And it had gotten to the point where like, I couldn't function in my house as a human being. I couldn't function as a mother. I was having bouts of collapsing on the floor. I had such intense vertigo. You know, I had a trouble standing even sometimes. And one of the symptoms that I was dealing with was really severe food, uh, food uh, sensitivities mm -hmm. and eczema that had covered my entire hand. Now, what had happened was it had gotten so severe and so bad that my skin was like leather. It was so thick and cracked and blistering and bleeding. Mm. And like my hand was like shrinking. It was like the skin was pulling really tightly and I, I couldn't do body work anymore. Um, God was really pulling me inward, you know, and showing me like, Hey, I need you to listen. You're not listening get, get quiet and get still. And that was like the only way that I would listen because, you know, at this point I'm just crying out, like, what am I missing? Yeah. What am I missing? What am I not getting here? Yeah. And so I remember, so this is kind of, this is the beginning of how all these pieces kind of started to take shape. So about two years ago, um, this is when this, it had gotten at its worst point with my hand and I'm crying out to God. I'm in the middle of doing some cleansing and fasting and I'm in the bath and I'm praying and I'm crying and I'm just like, God, like, show me what's going on. Why is this happening to me? Like, I love, I'm so devoted to you and I'm, I'm wanting to bring people to you all the time through this healing work. Why am I having this experience? Like, am I not devoted enough? You know, and I'm, there's part of me that's like, there's a little ego there going on. Right. Um, but, but then in that moment, when I finally like quit whining and got still and listened, I receive an audible response and I hear Stop going and pursuing the doctors. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have an answer for you because this is not something that's happening on a physical level. This is a virus of the mind. That's a, that's a tough one to accept. Mm -hmm. So, and then it goes on. It says, will you trust me? Well, that was a big like tearjerker moment for me because with my mom's testimony, one of the things that she heard when her journey shifted and she healed her body or God healed her body rather, um, was she heard God asking her, um, actually, I think, no, it wasn't asking. God was just saying, trust me, trust me. And so when I heard that, I'm like, ah! <laughs> just like the tears are flowing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I heard it again, won't you trust me? And I'm like, yes, yes. More than anything. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, what am I, what, what am I even doing here? Like, and then it continues. What urge will you give into the divine urge or the demi urge? Mm. Wow. That's huge. So at this point in my journey, I had dipped my toes into many different spiritual teachings and different um, ancient texts and things like that. I, I love, love learning about spirituality from all different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm like, I know I've heard that before, but I didn't have like a deep understanding of the demiurge. Like what, what does that mean exactly? I know I've read it in Gnostic gospels, but I don't remember like the fullness of what it is talking about. So then I hear it's okay, Aurora. I know you want to look it up. I'll wait. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's great. So God's got a sense of humor, you guys. Like this is, and you can't make this stuff up. No, the thing you is, can't. like, I didn't, I didn't even have a full understanding of what that meant. But when I got out of the bath and I went and grabbed my phone so that I could look this up, I, my jaw dropped completely because I was just like, wow, like I couldn't have come up with that phrase mm-hmm. or that question. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, and for those of you who aren't really that aware, like, um, there's, you know, mammon that is like, mammon is like the, the, the ruling force of the physical, the demiurge is like the world of illusion. It's like the illusory, the temp, the temporal, the sort of, um, temporary world that we're living in that is, you know, you can liken it to, the matrix, right? Yes. For yes. Common vernacular or in the Toltec, they call it um, mitote. And I think it's Ojibwe, they call it uh, watiko. Mm-hmm. There's all these different phraseologies, right? That, that point to the same thing, which is, this is a world that is um, led by something other than the most high. It is a creation of the most high, but it, you know, has within it these layers of distortion and deception that can kind of, you know, they can, it can kind of hook us in and make us believe that we aren't what our true nature is, which is a beautiful child of God with this divine inheritance available to us. And so the world of illusion will also create susceptibility to suffering, to wailing and gnashing of teeth, to illness, to all of these things that we don't have to experience. And so another piece that had dropped in during that experience was, you know, I am big into herbalism, natural, you know, uh, holistic living, natural food, all organic lifestyle, all of that stuff. And God was emphasizing, you know, about the herbs and the supplements, like, like these are good and these are my gifts to you, but they are not your savior. Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was huge for me too, because I was like loading up on every supplement and trying every herbal remedy. And the thing was, I was so over inundated with all of that stuff that it was actually more of a hindrance to my body to try and sift through everything. And, you know, it had compromised my state of mind too, to, to seeking outside of myself for all of these means to heal my body. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that experience happens. I have this beautiful encounter with God. And the next morning after I'd gone to bed that night, I woke up and my hand was perfectly smooth, healed, like nothing had ever happened. Wow. Wow. So that was my first hint. Like I'm trying to get your attention, you know, snap out of it, snap out of the world of illusion. I need you here now with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Now the next two years after that was still, there was still like seeking, there was still me sort of falling out of sync in many of these different ways. Um, And not all of the symptoms that were going on in my body had disappeared completely, but they had greatly improved. Mm -hmm. But it was like that had to happen as evidence that like, yes, this is what you have access to, but you have to believe fully in this reality, fully in me. So um, so moving on from that point, um, let's see. Yeah. So he, at this point, you know, I'm already being reached out to and, and I'm receiving it, but I'm not fully putting all of the pieces together. And I'm still kind of seeking outside of myself, especially someone who's been so 
um, and Klein have had like a proclivity toward um, the psychic, the supernatural, all of these things. Like I've, I've had this desire to kind of dive into that stuff from um, kind of seeking it from the outside instead of really allowing like, and it was interesting because I've spent years of my life devoted to deep trans practices. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the things that, you know, in, in deep trance and energy work and body work, these are the, like, this is the territory where a lot of times, you know, teachers will tell you, you got to be really careful. You got to be grounded. You got to make sure that you, um, you clear your energy field when you're doing this kind of work, you know, because you can have interference or you can take things on from other people. Well, you know, while I, um, believe that and and practice that wholeheartedly like i thought that i was doing everything right and um was going about my practices in the best way that i knew how um but at the same time things were still happening to me and so one of the things like one of my strengths one of the things that i um ha- had a really strong sense of was medical intuition Okay. As a blanket statement, um, we'll just call it medical intuition, but, um, you could also liken it to a very strong physical empath. So I was having these experiences of, um, and I've been having these experiences since I was pretty young as well. Um, but essentially for those of you who aren't familiar I would have the experiences of getting in proximity to certain people and I would feel things that are going on in their body. And I'm not just talking about like some people are physical empaths and they're like, oh, I can feel what's going on emotionally. Mm -hmm. This was a whole other level for me. Like I would feel things physically that were going on with other people in my body. Now this had progressed to such a degree where it was making me physically sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, and I didn't know that And I was, I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was grounding. I thought I was protecting myself. I thought I was doing all these things. And, and in my understandings, I had even reached a point where I was like, oh, there's nothing to protect yourself from. It's all God, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I had kind of thought that I had surpassed that state. Um, And I think big picture, I think that that is true, but there's a crucial component to that. And that's being in, in um, being in the, the territory, right. Or the jurisdiction of Christ or of Yeshua. And when we're in that jurisdiction and when we surrender ourselves to sort of, um, integrate him as that divine filter, as that cosmic filter, then we have this mechanism of protection and this, this mechanism of bestowal of the Holy Holy Spirit that can then come through us and move through us. And any, anything that comes through us as a gift can then be cleansed and made, made pure and made perfect so that we can experience it in a way that is uplifting, that is healing, that it doesn't have to be struggle. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't know this at the time. And I was just like, oh, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just working really hard and I'm doing all the steps and I'm doing the protocols and I'm doing the breath work and I'm doing the yoga and I'm, I'm, you know, working with my Kundalini and I'm doing all, you know, all of these like mechanical things that Mm -hmm. is like our way of trying to reach God from the ground up. Mm -hmm. God's like, honey, I'm trying to like, bestow from Mm -hmm. the crown down because you are a divine child of God. And so this is like, like God's trying to show us we are divine royalty. And that if we receive in that manner from the top down, that we can actually receive the gifts of the Holy spirit, which are completely different than trying to activate the Kundalini Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now. And the thing with that is like, you know, and this is another thing that has been a a point of revelation. So, um, the difference between activating Kundalini versus the, um, basically receiving the Holy spirit is that we are in practicing Kundalini. We are essentially coming from the ground up. And the image that was given to me was like the tower of Babel. 
um, where, you know, everyone is trying to make this tower to reach heaven, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be part of that world of God to, uh, but through our own means. Right. And the problem with that is that when we activate Kundalini from the ground up, what's happening is, is it's blasting open these energy centers. And if we're not ready for it, if we're not in God's will or universal law, mm -hmm. if we're not in that alignment and in that flow, what happens is, is our meridians start going bananas because all of this energy is just blasting through the body. And if we're not perfectly balanced, it throws the whole body out of whack and we can get sick. Um, there can be major physical repercussions that can happen. People have gone like mentally unstable through those kinds of experiences because it can blast open your crown or your third eye. And if you're not having balance in your other energy centers, then the whole body is just like, ah, because it's just like, it's like blowing through a straw, you know, and if things aren't in the right place at the right time, it, it just throws everything out. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes, it heals and cleanses and perfects as it's given to us. And so if we can be in receptivity of that, and in pursuit of that, or as they call it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we actually are healed in the process. We're made perfect in the process. All of these things get back into alignment in the process. We may end up with, you know, amazing visionary capability, amazing gifts of the Holy Spirit, which can be prophecy, dreams, you know, um, laying on of hands, like all of these different things that I think we're seeking as seekers. But if we're doing it in the manner of seeking from the outside in, instead of, you know, allowing God to really place that in our heart from the inside and then, and then working that outward. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's just a massive, massive game changer. Um, so anyway, when I was speaking about to the, the experience of um, being a physical empath, it was to the degree where like a client could be thinking about calling me for a session for like a week before. And that week before I would start experiencing the symptoms that they were having. Mm -hmm. And I would even, I would tell my husband, I'd be like, I don't know what's going on with me. I've never felt anything like this in my whole life. And suddenly I feel like I've got this thing going on and I think there's something wrong with me. And then, you know, five, seven days later, I'd get a phone call or an email with this person telling me exactly what they were um, experiencing. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, wow. And it was like clockwork. This was happening over and over and over again in many different ways, but especially when people, it was like the quantum entanglement, right? Mm -hmm. is that we're part of this quantum field. And if someone even thinks about you in that way, you are in the same space as them, mm -hmm. essentially. There's no separation of space and time. Mm -hmm. So um, so part of what has happened over the last six months is that I've gone through this process of clearing out my field, of cleansing, um, of renewal, and asking God to take away anything that is not in alignment with his will um, and just to renew me completely. And um, so I, in that process, I'm like any gift that I have that has that has not come from you or that has been um, an interference pattern in my life that may have come from another source, like take it away if it's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that has shifted for me is that I'm no longer having that experience. Now I'm still having experiences of having like an awareness of something that someone's experiencing, but I don't feel it in my body anymore. That's been completely cleared. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been huge because that was like, felt like an affliction for mm -hmm. at least like 15 years of my life. Mm-hmm. And I can remember one of my earliest teachers 
telling me, you know, honey, you don't have to feel it in your body. And I was like, oh, but this is like a gift. Like, it's, I just thought it was so amazing that I could be in someone's presence and I could experience, you know, feeling this stuff, but it, it was so debilitating. Mm-hmm. I mean, beyond, you know, just feeling the feels of people. It wasn't like going into a mall and being like, oh, this is too much for me. Like, yes, that too. But I mean, <laughs> I'm talking, I couldn't even be in my own house because it was so bad. But part of what has recently developed has shifted that, which is a total blessing in my world. So, um, so, so to, to give you an idea of, of what has transpired, there was a major catalyst and I won't go into the whole story because I know we only have so much time in an interview. Um, but there was this major catalyst that had occurred, um, with, um, a, uh, like a leadership figure in my world. And, um, I was being given visions around it and it was like vision after vision, after vision, I was being given and I kept pushing it away. And God's like, Hey girl, I'm trying to tell you something and you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to ignore it because it was too horrendous for me to believe. I was like, there's no way this is happening. This is crazy. I can't even look at that. And God's like, look, I need you to pay attention. And so it turned out that um, the things that I were seeing in the visions were true. And um, and there was spiritual warfare happening. Um, and so and I know this is this is something that I had to come to terms with, is that a lot of what was going on in the like new age and metaphysical you know, circles that I was running in. Um, people had gotten so complacent around spirituality that it was like, there was no more, there was no more room to look at like negative energy or negative entities or anything like that, that it was all just, everything was love and light and Mm. there was no potential for interference or anything like that. And, um, and, and, and that's where I was, I, I was so just like, Uh, you know, just in my mind. Right. But then I was still suffering. Mm -hmm. So it was like, why is this still happening if I don't even believe in that stuff? Mm -hmm. You know? And so there was a big realization around the fact that there was interference that was happening and it was, it was affecting me. And that does not mean that we're victims. Okay. So I want to clarify that, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, me sharing this and me sharing these insights in no way am I trying to um, convert people or I'm not even coming from a a little religious perspective, but rather giving people just some food for thought based on my own experiences of, um, you know, what was happening for me, the insights that have come in and how I've been able to shift out of the suffering um, because of having these interactions with Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So um, as um, where was I, where was I going with that? I'm I'm not sure, but basically um, you were talking about an authority figure or a mentor or someone in your life and you were having visions and then, you know, um, is that where you left off? And then you were exactly yes. Okay, then you were you. talking about how everyone's all in light and love all the time and assuming they're all protected and everything's good. Meanwhile, you're suffering. So something yes. is right. Yes, exactly. So, and that's the thing is that you know if we have these um, these spaces of vulnerability or weakness, um, we and we don't have the filter of Christ. This is what I'm being shown. Is that we are vulnerable. We do have these sort of openings in our, in our life, in our body, in our mind, um, that are like hook hooks and bait. Mm -hmm. And they're just kind of like dangling in front of us. And if we don't, if we don't, um, give them our attention, then we can kind of move through that moment. But if we, if we see them like, like a symptom, for example, Mm-hmm. We see that and, and it's a hook and bait and that's the enemy, so to speak. That's, that's the interference. 
Okay. This is the spiritual warfare that's going on. It's going on, on on many different levels. And so when, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, micro to macro, I mean, this is Mm -hmm. happening on a universal scale, um, but it's happening within the governments. It's happening in our own body vehicles. And so we have to be vigilant. We have to pay attention because otherwise we can be won over. And as soon as we take that bait, then we begin to, you know, we're chewing it up, we're digesting it. And then what we, we start to embody it. It becomes part of us. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially, you know, a, a a darker force or a, a vector of attack where we then are dealing with these components or these, these sentient beings. And, and that even goes for like different, different emotions. There's this whole myriad of emotions that we have available to us to choose at any given moment. And all of these, all of these emotions are sentient in nature. I remember reading the, um, the Essene gospel of peace, and they spoke about the different virtues and peace and joy as the angel of joy, the Mm -hmm. angel of peace. And if we realize that all of these emotions are sentient, I'm not trying to say that they're black and white, but they are one polarity or another. Mm -hmm. And so the denser emotions, as we would call it in the spiritual community, are um, representative of these darker forces or these polarized forces or the rebellious ones that have tried to do it on their own, tried to make it on their own. Another way of looking at this, you know, some people in religious circles may call these demonic forces mm-hmm. or um, the fallen angels, right? Like, like they the have archons. Dominion. Some people call them archons. Archons. Mm-hmm. Yes, totally. Um, and so while we don't want to focus on them and give them our attention, we need to be vigilant enough to be able to spot them so that we can be fortified so that we're not dealing with these influences and attacks in our world. Because some people, especially in the spiritual community, and especially if, you know, we're psychics or we're channelers and things like that, like, like that's a major open door for these things to come in because they can, they can give you like a a solid 20% truth and then 80% BS, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we have to be really careful to allow you know, to not allow that stuff to infringe on our spiritual walk. And so the shift for me has been allowing that integration of the Holy Spirit fully into my life and body to flood, to overflow, to crowd out any darkness Mm -hmm. so that there's no space for that nonsense. And when I see a hook, like, oh, here's a little symptom that wants to, you know, play games. I'm just like, okay, God flood me, flood me with your presence, flood me with the Holy Spirit, because I don't have room for this nonsense in my reality. And with a few deep breaths and and just some focus, and sometimes it takes longer than other times, but it shifts and it shifts rather quickly if we allow it to. Mm -hmm. So, and and I know I sound really preachy, but I'm, it's, I promise it's not like, it's not coming from a place of, I know something that other people don't know. It's coming from a place of enthusiasm because I'm so Mm -hmm. freaking fired up that I finally reached a point in my life where my body is feeling healthy and whole and complete. And like, like I feel loved, I feel loved and cared for. And so, so this catalyst that occurred was such a major turning point for me because in that process, it, it called out deception in some of the highest levels and some of the places of spirituality where we're looking to these people on these pedestals and these authority figures as leaders of their field, they're pioneers, they're, you know, people that, you know, we all look up to and want to be like, and here they are. And the thing is, yes, we're still human and we're going to be flawed and stuff's going to happen. We're all going to go through that. But Mm -hmm. some of some of the levels of deception that are happening at some of these top tiers are so horrendous because when when darkness, the the rebel spirits want to hook and bait these people, they do it in such a way that 
you know, they're big targets because they're affecting so many people. And so they yes. want to infuse deception as much as possible. Yes. Now, the people who are, you know, the tips of the spear, who are, you know, leaders in the field, they don't, uh, they don't know. They don't know they're being used. They don't know they're being hijacked. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't and they mean well. And that's the sad part. But so all of this deception, I start seeing behind the curtain, the veil is being lifted and I'm seeing all of this stuff. I'm being given more visions of like all of this stuff happening behind the scenes with these people in high places in the spiritual community. And I am like sickened. I'm just like, and I don't mean to use that language and like infuse that into my reality, obviously, but I, that's how I was feeling. Just like, wow, I can't believe this stuff is happening it was so gross and disheartening that I didn't know how to take it. And so I literally fell to my knees crying out to God, just like, I need to know the truth. Mm -hmm. God, show me the truth crying. I mean, there was a month straight where I was just praying every single day, just asking God to show me what is the truth because I can't do this on my own. I can't, um, pretend to have any of this figured out anymore. I don't, I just know nothing. That's, that's where I'm at. I know nothing anymore. And I need to be shown like a baby because I don't have any of it figured out. Mm -hmm. And so it took that ultimate complete surrender and humility for God to be like, okay, you're listening now. And I'm like, (laughs) show me, you know? And so every day from that point, something would trickle in. It was like, they, they speak of in the Bible, um, mana, which is like spiritual food. I'm sure you've, mm-hmm. you're familiar with that. Um, and that's what it felt like. I was being given these little like breadcrumbs of this spiritual, like mana every day. And so either something would come in the form of a video or a phone call or an encounter or a vision or, you know, an email or something like I was just getting information every single day and all of it was pointing to Yeshua and I'm like okay but what does that mean you know and um I was had been um hooked up with different um streams of inspiration um I became part of a private um discipleship program and was just and the cool thing is is that this program that I'm part of now is like the deepest mystery school that I have ever encountered. The body thrives when it has a mission, and there is no greater mission than to become the change we wish to see in the world. Sometimes though, we need a little help from consultation and support services. Have you discovered that this world is not what you thought it was? Have recent global events awakened you and leave you feeling unsettled? Do you feel isolated with your not-so-popular newfound beliefs? Would you like to learn to thrive in this new state of awareness? It is a big shock to wake up and find that the old familiar world is gone, and it can be disturbing to go down the various rabbit holes, only to find that the information is difficult to digest, and few people are willing to talk openly about it. You are not a conspiracy theorist. You are awakening, and once you find your way through it, there are many blessings on the other side. My name is Karen Holton, and I offer vital services that may be just what you need and support for your journey into the weird and wonderful. Check out my Awakening Support and Ascension consultation created to support individuals with their chosen alternative realities and lifestyles, health and recovery, and spiritual adventures. For more details, check out the various vital services found on my website and be assured that I have found personal success with every category featured. My website is www.k
KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N HealthCoach.com. And so, you know, we inherently, I think, unless we're just kind of zombies in the matrix, are are seekers. We want to know. We want to know the truth. And Mm -hmm. I was seeking all of these places outside of like the Bible, for example, the the actual canon. I was looking at all of these non-canonical texts and unconventional um, modes of spirituality and other ancient texts just from all around the world, except I wasn't looking in the Bible at all. And I'm not saying that the Bible is the only place to get inspiration, but I just, you know, I was only, you know, sifting through and sort of cherry picking in some ways things that resonated. And then the rest of it, I wasn't even spending any time like fully immersed and and seeing what was there. And so what's cool is that like it, there's so much there. There's so much there that I had no idea. I was not aware of. Um, I was also called to read some, you know, other non-canonical texts that I hadn't, hadn't read in completion. I ended up reading the book, the books of Enoch. And I will say, if you haven't read those, please immerse yourself in them, or at least give it a try because every question that we have in the spiritual community about ETs and, you know, all of these different things, like bloodlines and the different um races and like the pharaohs and all these like it's all there like Mm -hmm. all of these ancient traditions that we're so fascinated with it's all there and so uh, there's all of these people who are trying to figure it out and you know um find you know spell it out through archaeology and all of that and i think that's all helpful but there's just so much to be seen um in some of these books so Then I come across the Pistis Sophia, and I'm just going to show you a little snippet here. So this is just like a pre, um, it's talking about, it's talking about the text. So it's saying in the, in the Pistis Sophia, Jesus is everywhere, preeminent and central. He is here revealed as savior and first mystery who knows all and unveils all infinite in compassion. As such, he is preexistent from eternity. So this is where I'm like, wait, 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 what? So here I am reading a non-canonical text, looking for truth and Yeshua or Jesus reaches through the Pista Sophia, grabs me by the heart and is like, girl, like, I am here. Let like I'm having a direct encounter with you. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm seeing, you know, I have this idea that he was this teacher or master or ascended being. And here I'm like, wait a second, pre-existent from eternity. And his ministry is not only earthly, but cosmic and super cosmic. Indeed, it is the chief feature in the divine economy. Holy cow. Holy cats, holy buckets. Okay, so then there's this part. This is in the actual Pistis Sophia. It came to pass when Pistis Sophia had said these words that the time was fulfilled that she should be led out of the chaos. And of myself, without the first mystery, I dispatched out of myself a light power and I sent it down to the chaos so that it might lead Pistis Sophia forth from the deep regions of the chaos and lead her to the higher regions of the chaos until the command should come from the first mystery that she should be led entirely forth out of the chaos. And my light power led Pistis Sophia up to the higher regions of the chaos. And then it goes on to talk about um, her, uh, revival or reinstation to the proper aeon that she had fallen from. So Mm -hmm. there's, I mean, you can explore that more if that's something that interests you, but, you know, me being really interested in like Christian mysticism and things like that, like I was deep in all of these mysteries, but when I saw that and I realized like this force, people only call by a certain name, but they don't understand that it's nameless. Mm -hmm. But it's a presence nonetheless. Mm 
-hmm. you know, and it's, it wants to envelop us and it wants to rapture us in complete bliss. And it wants to fill us and pour forth gifts for us, you know? So, so here I am experiencing all of these little truths coming in and having all of these revelations. And I'm like, deciding, okay, I'm going to go do a baptism and all of these things, like just jumping on board, but from a really deep place of spiritual mystery and not in the box of religion. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like following the path, but like in a completely new kind of way. And it turns out there's people out there who are actually walking this path, which originally is called the way, like it's the yes. way, yes. you know, it's, it's pre mystery school. And that was another funny thing because that was another revelation that came, you know, a couple of years ago was, and that, that came, I, I can't remember like what was going on, but I just remember, you know, investigating through all of these different paths and mystery schools and the, and the word that came through was the original teachings are the way they were not mysteries there was no need to be in mystery the only reason that they went there was to protect them mm -hmm. from um oppression or suppression mm -hmm. but in the mystery it becomes suppressed so we have to be willing to shine you know and walk the way walk through that narrow gate because it's it it may not be easy because there's a lot of you know persecution that can come with knowing who you are and knowing in certainty that Christ lives in you mm -hmm. and that that is the Holy spirit. And that the most incredible miracles can happen from that place. So, um, so Aurora, just so you yeah. know, um, we're quickly running out of time. We got a few minutes left. Um, I'm not trying to rush you or cut you short or anything, just so that you can, you know, plan um, how much more you want to tell us, which we want to hear. Uh, please don't take take this the wrong way. Um, I've also had um, some technical difficulties with my furry ch children. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I apologize for when I had to shut the camera off briefly. But um, yeah, anyway, so yes, please continue. No worries. Um... So I'll go ahead and fast forward. There's so much that I could share. And I, I know that it's obvious just to see that I'm really excited about mm -hmm. everything that, that has been showing up for me. Um, but um, yeah, so I guess what was really coming clear was, you know, the reason why I couldn't heal my body was that I was lacking that perfected state. I was lacking that perfect interface that was designed to be part of our experience, which is mm -hmm. that communication mechanism, which is Christ, which is Yeshua, which is Jesus. And, you know, I just, I just didn't have the pieces together. So I've been in hot pursuit of allowing that to fill me as much as humanly possible. And I, I mean, I, the encounters that I've had are, you know, some of them are somewhat personal. I've been woken up in the night by being tapped on my leg one night when there was an Aurora Borealis happening outside, um, after having a dream about it, like so many unbelievable things have been happening to show me that I'm on the right path. And so last week I had an opportunity to go to, um, a service slash conference type of type of experience, but it wasn't really a conference. There wasn't, you know, classes or anything. So, um, and some of you may be familiar with him. I'll go ahead and share. I went to go see Todd White. So I don't know who that is. I didn't either. Oh, at the, well, okay. <laughs> I didn't either until fairly recently. So, but then when I found out who he was and I listened to some of his stuff and I saw how fired up he was, this guy, this, this guy's like this he looks like this bodybuilder kind of character, but he's got dreadlocks, super spiritual though. And he's walking with Christ and he's talking. I I've heard him talk about his encounter with the, um, having the baptism of the Holy spirit or baptism by fire. And, you know, that sounds like really religious terminology, but if you are a seeker and you want a direct encounter with God, this is the juice. This is the ultimate. You can't get more metaphysical than this. So I'm like, this is what I want. Like, I want to be in union with God. And that's what this is. So 
I'm like, okay, I'm going to this event and I'm just really excited. Like I, I'm not leaving there until my body's fully healed. So, <laughs> so I go to this event. The music is really beautiful. We end up having a seat way off to the side. And, you know, my friend and I were kind of looking at the seat and we're like, oh, I wish we could get kind of up front, you know, instead of way off to the side. But I, I, I still have this, you know, trust that lives within me that knows that everything happens for a reason. And I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. So as I'm sitting there, I realize that, um, you know, the music is happening. I'm getting into this beautiful space. I'm feeling this rising up. And this is the, you know, this is um, the, the second time that I had been into a church in 20 years. And so, you know, it was already kind of strange being inside of a church building because I was like, am I going to catch fire? Like, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> just being like, I don't know how to process everything, but um, but I'm just going in and full surrender and just letting God like have me in this moment. So I'm just allowing myself to be present with all of the feels with the music and just being like in deep gratitude. And that is a major key too, is that when we allow ourselves to just, you know, and that's what people talk about as worship, right? Is that we're just like in total gratitude for what we are, for the opportunities that we have, for the healing that's already taking place, being in that state of gratitude that people have scientifically proven that gratitude you know, it shifts our endocrine system. It shifts our hormones. It shifts DNA. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is already a good thing, whether you're thinking of it in a spiritual manner or not, it's still, that's what's happening. Um, So here I am just in total, like, you know, openness and softness and bliss. And Who comes up and sits two rows in front of us, but Todd White, who's the guy that's going to be presenting. So he gets up there, he gives a bit of a sermon, he shares his testimony, he does some scriptural references, Um, all of it's amazing. And it's just blowing my mind because there were so many things that I just didn't know. And, um, And so then he goes in and he's talking about his direct encounter with the Holy Spirit, which I'd already heard him speak of on video, but hearing it in person is like, he's got the fire, like that, that fire has been infused into him Mm -hmm. and it's contagious. And so the whole room just feels like it's being basked in this, you know, this warmth and this glow and this enthusiasm and, um, as he completes his story, he says, you know, how many of you are after this? You know, who's, who's wanting to experience this? And of course, everybody's, you know, we're all excited. And he said, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to make a tunnel of fire or fire tunnel or something like that. And I'm like, okay, what's that? Like, (laughs) this sounds exciting, but I have no idea what you're talking about. So he gets down in preparation and one of the staff members of the church gets up and begins talking about the protocol, how they're going to essentially take everybody through the church who wants to be part of this and kind of run a line through. And they have these, these lines set up in the front um, so they can run two lines of people through these um, the prayer teams and people that are, you know, doing laying out of hands and prayer and like um, anointing and different stuff like this is all happening in the front of this church. And so as you go through the line, people are touching you, they're praying over you. Some people are speaking in tongues and, you know, some people, and this is the thing is that like some people associate um, or they're, they're more familiar with the term light language, but like in, when you're speaking in tongues, it's like the Holy spirit is actually moving through you exclusively we're like, we're becoming spiritual monogamists, so to speak, <laughs> instead of just being open to like anything that could potentially be, you know, negative interference. So um, it's like a whole, it's like a whole new level. Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm going through, um, I, and it was interesting because our section ended up being the first section besides women, like women with children to be able to go through these lines. So I just am trying to let go as much as humanly possible. And I'm, I'm 
being taken through the line and it feels like I'm going through a wormhole. All these lights are moving past my face and my body and I'm hearing prayers, but it's like, you know, it just is like energy swirling and I can feel things moving through my body and I can feel things leaving my body. And it's just this super heightened sensitivity, but in a way that I know that I'm being made whole and that God is rushing through me. And so I get to the end of the line and some people are buckling at the knees and falling down. And some people are having these cathartic moments. Some people are in tears. Some people are screaming, but not in a scary way, just like letting things go. Right. It's beautiful. And so um, then I'm like, I'm super disoriented at this point. And I'm just like, but I'm still in my, in my spirit in my head space enough to go, okay, I need to like find my chair. Where do I go? And I'm just like trying to find my way back. So I finally wander back to my general seating area and I'm standing there and I start to notice that hook and bait, right? Like we were talking about before. And I start hearing these thoughts, but then I realize part way through hearing them that they're not my thoughts. And so what I was noticing hearing was, is this for real? is this all psychosomatic? Am I ever going to heal? Is it just going to be one modality after another? You know, just like really like sneaky, insidious thoughts like that, that are kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I caught you. I, I hear you. And I notice you there. And this is not your dominion. Like I, you have no power here. Mm -hmm. This is God's house. Like I'm God's temple, right? Get out. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I just like surrender to the music. The music starts playing and I just completely let go. And I just start singing with the music and I can feel this sense of lightness that's starting to happen. And then suddenly this guy with a shofar or those big goat horns Mm -hmm. is standing right behind me. And he blows this horn and like sound. I mean, it was like ultimate sound healing. It was like, and he just like moved all of this energy where, you know, I had had resistance still hanging on in my heart. And it was like, it just shattered that. And my whole body starts trembling and shaking and I fall forward And thankfully I was standing right in front of a chair. So I was able to fall into this chair and my whole body is, you start like convulsing, but not in a way where I feel like I'm in danger. It's like God is moving crap that does not need to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. And tears start coming. And the guy behind me, he's just in total praise. And he's just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for permanent healing. And all of this, and he's just going on and on. I'm like, if I had heard that, like, if I could have seen this like snapshot a year ago, I'd be like, wow, like really that's what we're doing now. But the whole transformational process and, and being there and feeling it and feeling the reality of it, like my body was changing right before my eyes in my, in that moment. And I knew that I was being healed for certain without any doubt. And so as he blows that horn again, and there's, he's just continue saying, thank you for what's already done. I fall forward out of the chair. I'm prostrate on the ground and I'm just in tears because I know that it's already done. It's being like, it's in the works. It's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And then what I start to notice is that the pain that had been in my body for probably the last five years through different, you know, fibromyalgia and all of these different things where there was just pain. Like I had all these weird phantom pains that had moved to all of these different sections of my body that would come and go. What I noticed was that was interference. That was like some other energy or life form or entity, like living in my body without my conscious awareness or permission. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, it was all you know, compressing together, like it was trying to hide. And it formed this like little tight, tightly knit ball under my left scapula, right behind my heart. And I'm like, 
I can feel all this happening. And I'm like, <clears throat> oh my goodness, what is going on? And all of a sudden I feel this beautiful, soft, gentle hand right over my scapula. And I'm like, wow, like right on that spot and tears. I mean, I can't stop the tears from flowing. My breathing has changed at this point. I don't even feel like I'm in control of my body in this, like I could stop it if I needed to, but like, it didn't feel like I was, it didn't feel like I was in control of the breathing. Like all of this was sort of autonomic that was happening. Like God's way of helping to clear everything out through the breath, like, you know, through the tears, through the laughing, through the crying, like all, all of it. And so, and, and this hand, this presence was there with me. I don't even know how long I was on the floor, but at least like at least a half an hour. And the person was probably there with me for an additional 10 minutes or something. And um, finally, I started to be able to compose myself enough to, you know, lift my head and I go and I, you know, put my hand on this hand. And as I, I kind of lift my head to come, you know, sit up, I look over and it's this woman who had to be in her like late seventies, early eighties. And I'm like, and then I'm just bawling because, you know, culturally we look at people like elders, like they shouldn't be leaning over and hunched over and on the ground and all of the, and here like ultimate, you know, humility and seeing someone, you know, my age and here she is just in total presence. Like that was just like so selfless and beautiful that I was just so moved by that. Mm -hmm. And so finally, as I'm able to stand up, I turn around and the brother that was behind me with the horn, um, is receiving, um, some of his friends were laying hands on him and doing some kind of healing. And they were praying for the healing of his scoliosis that he had. And I realized in that moment, like this brother was just like a major catalyst for some stuff to move for me. I am here for him. So I turn mm -hmm. around and I start praying. Mm -hmm. I start asking for the Holy Spirit to flood and overflow his body, to extract anything that was, you know, of distortion or disharmony, pull it out by the roots and give it back to the fire of God. And like, oh, you know, and I'm just like in it, you know, so I lay my hand on his heart and the other one's just like in receptivity of the Holy Spirit. And I'm probably standing there with him for a good, you know, at least 10 minutes, if not more. I mean, this was a to totally timeless experience. All of this stuff happening, you know, in such a way that um, it was transcending space and time. And, um, you know, after a few minutes, I, I finally kind of, you know, went went back and was part of the the larger um group what was happening there and so i hear in the background him speaking to his friend and he said there's no more pain in my back it's gone and he said i feel like i've just grown four inches and the thing is is that miracles like this were happening all over the church there were you know i and then and then i was hearing stories about people that had seen limbs regrowing in front of their face and like all crazy things like this that modern science will, will tell you are not possible. So I'm sitting there and I'm debriefing with the friend that I had gone with. And, you know, I was sharing with her like what I had been experiencing before that. And she's like, she's like, you need to have Todd pray over you. And I'm like, oh, you know, at this point it's late. He's already like trying to make his way to the back of the room. And I'm like, you know, I got to let him go because, you know, he's trying to get out of here. And she's like, come on, you, you got to do this. So I, I, I finally, I get up with enough gumption and I make my way to the back of the room. And, um, he was talking to one last person. He goes out into the hallway. And then, you know, I, I, I at that point I was like, Oh, it's not going to happen. And she goes out there after him anyway. And I have this vision, um, that I felt like I was given in that moment for a reason of me going to a Deepak Chopra conference in the Charlotte area um, a few years back. And I'm standing in line. And I'm the very last person. This actually happened. And he looks up at me and he's like, I'm sorry, I have to go, you know. 
And I'm like, I'm like, it's okay. I understand. And so God gave me that experience and that vision so that I could have the gumption to go talk to him because God's like, you're not going to miss an opportunity. And the whole thing with Deepak Chopra was like, that wasn't important anyway. It was just there for you to have this moment of recognition to go forth and experience this. So I go out there and he's willing to see me before he leaves. And he's like 50 feet from the door, getting ready to walk out the door. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, well, you know, I've, I've had this thing. And I just really briefly explained and just said it affected my nervous system and my heart. And he said, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, I told him it was undiagnosed. And so he's like, just hold my hands and we're going to pray. And I'm like, okay. So um, we start praying and something starts, you know, shake, like shaking my body again and coming out of my body. And, and he's like, um, you know, as that was happening, emotion was starting to sort of overtake my body and like my eye. I was kind of going back because I was like, you know, feeling these waves of emotion. He's like, don't you close your eyes, honey. You stay with me. You keep looking at me. And he he was like staring into my soul and he's like, you get out of her now. It was like he was talking to something sentient that was trying to interfere with my path on this planet. And in that moment, he was able to just by like casting that whatever it was out, get it out of me. And it, my, I mean, my body re- in such a way that this this thing like moved up and out from my throat and came out from like my heart through my breath and I felt in that moment like I could breathe for the first time in maybe my whole life like I had never felt breath move in my body in that manner before and it was like I could feel the waters of my body alive and I could feel the breath of my body alive. And I just felt so um, euphoric. So anyway, that's my story. And I know wow. we're completely out of time. Wow. But to share Fantastic. That Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I have to close the show out or it will. I'm actually quite a bit over time and um, I need it to be able to upload to my other platforms. If it's too big, it won't go. But um, that's incredible, Aurora. I'm so glad you shared that with us today. And I hope you keep us posted. And um, I'm so sorry, but I have to close out now. I want to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And take care. And um, thanks for joining us on the Quantum Guide Show. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Quantum Guide Show. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, and Telegram channels. Like this video and share it with your friends. You can also find The Quantum Guide Show and my other podcast called Aliens and Astrology on the Forbidden Knowledge News Network. That's www forbiddenknowledge.news and while you're at it check out my website www.karenboltonhealthcoach.com where you will find some amazing products and services and an abundance of free resources to help you with your journey all of the links are in the description below And in the meantime, until we see you next week, keep up the good work. Splendor and endlessness All my inner strife to rest For time gives birth to a redness It all makes sense well more or less And the sages put me to their test Heart and soul to do my best To find the answers to my quest I wonder and I must confess I don't know where it comes from But I know it's okay If this is all in me